Hi guys, this is Karthik and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It has been quite some time since I've uploaded a video and I was busy with my job actually for the past few weeks. Finally, I've got some time out of my schedule to make this nice video for you guys. This video will be based upon DP with bit masking and it appeared in one of the code shift long challenges a few years back. So the problem is medium difficulty. Medium means it is quite hard honestly. So medium would mean diff to seventh or eighth problem I guess or maybe sixth. But it's a nice problem and sorry for spoiling your fun and telling you that you can solve it using DP with bit masking. But even after knowing it is going to be a bit of challenge to actually solve it. It's a nice problem. However, it's easier than the previous problems in the series, the previous problem in fact, okay. So you can read the problem on your own and if you're too la lazy to do that, I'll be explaining it anyway. So there are n people in a town, okay, and there are a total of 100 t-shirts that they can buy. So let's say there is a store in this particular town and that store sells 100 kind of t-shirts or 100 type of t-shirts. So we can call them T1, T2, so on till T100. So these n people have only these t-shirts to choose from. So there can be infinite um, like T1 t-shirts, infinite t-shirts of type T2 and so on, right? And these people will be buying these t-shirts. So we know that person own uh, number one would be owning some of these t-shirts. Similarly, person number two would be owning some of these t-shirts and till the nth person. What we want to do is these n people, all of them will be going to a party being held at the town and what we want to do is we want to find the number of ways in which these people can wear uh, the t-shirts that they own and go to the party such that no two person at the party should be wearing a t-shirt with the same ID, right? So hopefully the, uh, these ex problem statement is clear to you. If it is not, let's look at the sample inputs. So look at this first input that I've highlighted. There are two people and person number one owns t3 and t5 person number two owns t8 and t100 so basically there is no way that these two can go to the party wearing the same t-shirt since they don't even own us own any t-shirt in common so person one can say okay i'll wear t-shirt number three and person number two can wear eight person number one can wear t-shirt number three person number two can wear hundred similarly person one can wear five person two can wear eight and person 1 can wear 5, person 2 can wear 100. So these are 4 ways in which these two people could go to the party and your answer is going to be 4 as given here. Similarly in the input number, uh, in fact they have explained it well enough. You can look at the sample input 2 also. The only case in not valid in this particular, uh, for these 3 people is that person 1 wears t-shirt number 5 and person three also wear t-shirt number five, then that is something invalid because we don't want any two people at the party to be wearing the same t-shirt. So that's a way that you should not be counting. And these are the ways that you should be counting. The code chef has explained it pretty well. That is uh, a good thing, okay? So let's move to the solution now. I recommend you guys to think about like five, 10 minutes for the solution and then you can watch the video. So the idea is simple, we are going to basically build upon the brute force. So the brute force is that we try out all the possibilities. We know that person number one owns a set of t-shirts. Similarly, person two owns a set of t-shirts and till the nth person. We assume that person number one wears the t-shirt number X that is being owned by him. And then we try out, try to find out what are the number of ways in which P2 till Pn these people can go to the party so that none of these people wear t-shirt number X and none of these wear the same t-shirt. So basically your problem nicely breaks down, right? Or uh, you could come up with a nice uh, recursive brute force solution and keep remembering that these t-shirts have already been worn till the ith person. So these t-shirts have to be avoided and uh, other than that any t-shirt can be worn. So for person one, he can wear any of these t-shirts that he owns. For person two, he can wear any of the t-shirts he owns except the one that is being worn by person number one. Similarly for person three until the nth person. This will be a nice brute force and this brute force solution will be having a very high complexity, right? Now you might think of optimizing this brute force solution by using DP with bit masking and you can say, okay, that there are a total of 100 t-shirts so I can have a set of the size 100. The 0th bit would represent that meaning that currently 
whether currently the zeroth t-shirt has been worn by a person or not and something like that and the ith bit would represent whether the ith t-shirt has been used till now or not so to be more clear i will define this thing let me define dp of i comma mask what are the number of ways for, for the person from pi till pn so ways for person till pi from pi till pn to wear t-shirts to a party so that none of these wear the same t-shirt or basically the people from this i till n only wear the t-shirts that are represented by this particular mask so this mask represents what are the t-shirt numbers available to us and since there are a total of 100 t-shirts in the town so this mask is going to be of 100 bits ith bit would represent if the ith bit of this mask is 1 or uh, let let me say j jth bit of this mask is 1 would represent that the jth t-shirt is still available to be worn by a person and jth bit of this mask is a 0 means that this t-shirt has already been worn by one of the people from p1 till pi pi minus 1 okay so dp of i minus i comma mask would mean the number of ways in which the people from pi till pn can go to the party so that they wear t-shirts that are being uh, they wear uh, t-shirts that consist only of the t-shirts available to them and that availability is being represented by this particular guy mask t-shirts available are represented by the mask initially all the t-shirts are available and as soon as person one uh, chooses one of the t-shirts to wear so that particular bit in this mask becomes zero because that t-shirt will be no longer be available to any of the people from p2 till pn t-shirt availability shown by mask and that's it so your answer would become dp of one comma you could say initially all hundred t-shirts are available so your mask looks something like this now the problem with this is that this particular mask here consists of hundred bits so it's two power hundred this is very bad even after using dp with bit masking our solution is poor let's think of something better now a different approach but uh, ideally it's the same thing but a different kind of thought process so i know that t-shirt number one will either be worn by a person that owns t-shirt number one or it will not be used simply so t1 would be owned by some of the people pi1 pi2 pi3 something like that similarly t-shirt number two will be uh, will be owned by some of the people and so on till the uh, t-shirt number 100 so i know uh, who all own t-shirt number one i know who all people own t-shirt number two and so on till the 100th t-shirt now either a t-shirt is worn by one of the person that owns that t-shirt number or no one wears it right and we would like to have exactly n t-shirts selected among these so here is what we can do i would say okay for t-shirt number one either no one wears it or one of these guys will wear it simply initially all the n people are not wearing any t-shirt so no don't take it in the wrong way but yeah the idea is that currently i have not assigned any t-shirt to any of the n people right <clears throat> now either i take t-shirt number one and assign it to one of the people who owns it or i simply ignore t-shirt number one then i go to t-shirt number two if I have assigned one of the people, so what I will be doing is that I will be taking t-shirt number 2 and assigning it to one of the people who owns it and has currently not yet been assigned any t-shirt in the past, right? So this thing will go on till the nth t-shirt and I would have assigned exactly, exactly n t-shirts uh, to n people and those t-shirts come from these t1 till t100 100 t-shirts right so that's it that's the idea now let's try to build a dp for this and analyze the time complexity so dp of i comma mask again now here i means that i am currently talking about the ith t-shirt and from ti till t100 i have all the t-shirts left yet to be assigned for t-shirts t1 till ti minus 1 i have already made a decision either assigned them them to someone or made them useless right anyway so this mask represents what are the people that are still not wearing any t-shirt or have not yet been assigned a t-shirt initially this mask consists of n number of ones in its binary right 
and this is the number of ways in which I could assign t-shirts uh, from ti till t100 to the people who are still not wearing anything as represented by this mask right so ways to assign and my final answer becomes what are the number of ways in which I could assign all the t-shirts from t1 till t100 given that initially all the n people are not wearing anything so that would mean now since n is only up to 10 so if you look try to analyze the space and time complexity for this let's just analyze the space first so there are 100 different possibilities for here so from t1 till t100 and there are 2 to the power n different values for this mask so 2 power n and that's it this thing works because n is small that did not work because the number of t-shirts was 100 and it was 2 power 100 all we are left to do is try to build a recurrence for dpi mask so as we said that either i assign the ith t-shirt to a guy or i ignore it so if i do not assign the ith t-shirt to anyone then that is simple i will be left with i plus uh, t-shirts from ti plus one till t100 and i still have the same people to be uh, to be assigned to t-shirts right so it becomes dpi plus one comma mask and the other way is that i could assign this t-shirt to one of the people who owns it and is still not wearing anything as represented by this mask so dpj I'll, rip, uh, I'll explain what this summation means here. So dpj, that means, uh, sorry, not dpj, dpi plus one. I just assigned the ith t-shirt to the jth guy. So ti has been assigned to pj, the jth person. And now I'm left with t-shirts from i plus one till the hundredth t-shirt and I still have the same people who are not wearing any t-shirt except that the jth person is now wearing a t-shirt so mask and turn off the jth bit in this mask turn off jth bit because the jth person is now wearing a t-shirt so he's not available and therefore the jth bit of this mask will be turned off and I'll be doing this for all the people or for all valid j here right i could assign the ith t-shirt to all the valid j here so for all valid j and what do i mean by a valid j so a valid j would mean that first of all the j bit of this mask should be on that means the person is available okay so by validity i mean j should be available pj should be available and the second thing that it means that person j should also own the tit right otherwise he cannot wear it if he does not own it so own of i comma j should be true this means that the ith t-shirt is owned by the jth person these two things should be true and that is what i mean by the valid j and this is that's it this is the recurrence we're done now we have already analyzed that the time complexity uh, space complexity is the number of t-shirts into 2 power n the time complexity is the number uh, is 100 into 2 power n the number of states and the work done per state what is the work done per state so we'll be looping through all the t-shirts represented by the mask there are exactly n t-shirts so we have n as the transition time and this will be your time complexity so we are done it's basically n into 2 power n into the number of t-shirts which is a constant here but we're done so let me just quickly show you the code that i had submitted a long time back so for now you could ignore this in function that this was a way to take the input taking the input is a bit complex here you can read this function on your own later on currently ignore it so this people here represents people ij would mean that the ith person owns the jth t-shirt if people at i comma j is true here dp ij would simply store my results and this solve function here uh, the uh, what t-shirt i'm currently at what are the people who are still not assigned any t-shirt and what is the total number of people so if i've assigned a t-shirt to all the people then return one and somehow the convention here in this code is opposite but 
that hardly makes a difference. So what I explained uh, zero one were different and what I've coded, like I had coded this thing way long back. So convention taken was opposite, but this simply means that if I have assigned a t-shirt to all the people, all the n people, then this is one valid way. And I could simply return one because my work is done. Assigning all t-shirts is completed. If uh, I, am, I ran out of the t-shirts I had and still not all people have been assigned a t-shirt, then I should return a zero. And if I've already solved this particular sub problem in the past, then uh, don't recalculate it, return the answer to it. Otherwise, try out all the valid people, all the valid I. So I'm trying out all the PIs and trying to make them wear the t-shirt number represented by this variable shirt. All right. And I, if the person owns this t-shirt, then you make him wear it and do the appropriate thing in the mask. Solve for the remaining thing. That's it. Finally, if I choose not to wear the use this t-shirt at all, then this is the second part of the recurrence. We as we discussed DP of I plus one comma mask and keep adding these take the mod store the result return it code is very simple. Sorry about the convention uh, difference in the explanation and the code. If you have any doubts, you can feel free to ask me in the comments and make sure that you like share and subscribe to the channel. I'll keep coming up with more and more content. Thanks for watching.